I think I never taught this before. Um, I don't even have a title for it, but I'm just gonna teach it with no title. Cool. You know, it's uh, something that I was learning. Uh, remember, we were talking about how, like, uh, in order for for you to like anybody, any person to like for their potential to be unleashed, they have to uh, first of all know God. You know, know him personally. You know, and then when they get to know him, the more they get to know him, um, not put him in a box. You know, not put him in a box. But like that's like probably one of the hardest things there is for people to like not not put things God or things in a box. Why? Because most people's interactions with the world have to do with their brains, with their their, their natural minds. And, you know, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ, but it's, I think it's, like most people don't even use it. You know what I mean? Like, you have the mind of Christ, but you don't use it. You use your brain. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, people s spend most of the time thinking logically, you know, and, and the things in the spirit, they don't, it's not that they don't make sense. They make more sense than the things that are logical. But it's that to your natural mind, they might not. But to the, to the mind of the spirit, it's completely, perfectly, you know, logical, the things that God knows. You know, they, they make a lot of sense. So most people spend time, like, um, operating from here. And because they, they operate from here, they even teach God from here. What they teach about God is from here, you know, from men's perspective, men's mindset. And so uh, you never get to see really people's potential, you know, what people can, what God can do through a person. You saw through... Uh, Jesus, Jesus came and he showed us what God could do through a man, you know, and it was something that it was like, check it out, you know, it's here, but most people that, they read the stories of Jesus, they don't think, oh, check it out, God's giving me a, an example, a blueprint to follow, you know, or, or, or to, or you got to show me what I can actually accomplish, what I can actually do, they don't think that, they say, they think, oh, that's Jesus. He's, he was perfect. He was sinless. He's the Son of God. That's Jesus. That's not me. That's God. They, they, they think like that. Like they make excuses of why they cannot do what Jesus did. You know, and um, I think what we, what we were talking about yesterday, there's some things in the Bible that I, I used to read when I was a kid that I kind of like missed. You know, sometimes I missed things. Sometimes I went back and read them. I'm like, oh, wow, look. And one of the things that I used to read when I was a kid when Jesus fed the 5,000, you know, there's a, at a time where before he fed them, um, the people were like, uh, the, the, the disciples were like, oh, they had the money to buy, I probably buy money, because they said, where can we gonna buy food for all these people? And, you know, they couldn't send them back because they, they felt like, oh, why they, you know, Jesus said, they fed on the way, he didn't want them. So he said, he looked, he also said, he turned around and looked at his disciples and said, you feed them. You know, and it was, it was a mockery. It was a mockery. It was like he believed that they could feed them. That the miracle, like he believed that they could do it. But they did not believe that they could do it. You know, so it's like, um, it takes me to, to, uh, to a place where I think like, okay, the more God sets you free and you start seeing, um, uh, the unlimited potential that you have, and that you and, and that you can walk in, you start seeing the same thing. You're supposed to be, you know, seeing it in other people too. You know what I mean? Like, like, for example, like when I see that how much God loves me, automatically I know how much God loves people. When I see when, how when God hooks me up with any little thing, like I be, I, I believe and I know that God wants to do the same thing for everybody, because He's not a respecter of person. So Jesus understood. The Bible says that. He understood that he had come from the Father, and he was going back to the Father, and that the Father had put everything in his hands. So, the way he thought about the disciples was the same way. He's like, 
Go heal. You know, when you go heal, don't take anything. Everything is provided for you. Don't take anything in your journey, wherever you eat, whatever they present you eat that, whatever somebody, you go to a town and they open doors for you, stay there, heal everybody in the city. For him, it was not like a stretch to, to think that they could do that stuff. Because he believed in them. He believed in them. He believed in the unlimited potential that they had. You know? And so, um, they did not believe that about themselves, obviously. You know? And so, that was the big thing. You know, when he gave up the waters, and, and Peter was like, hey, can I go? He said, can I? He could have said, no, you can't do this. You need to up, up the levels. You need to, you're not in the level that I am in. You're not, you're not, you know? He didn't say that. He said, come. He didn't hesitate to say, come. And then when he drowned, you know, I mean, the Bible says, like, I mean, at least the guy walked the waters. But you're like, oh, why do you doubt? You know, why do you doubt? And really that is um, the key, like one of, not the key, one of the biggest keys, you know, that, that why do we see things and why some people see some things, why some other people don't see things, you know, because... A lot of times, even people that talk about faith and they preach faith and they teach faith and they hear about faith, whatever, you know, they're double-minded. You know, it's like you believe, but then when things go bad and things go on in your life and things go, you know, then you start doubting. You know, when you don't see the results right away, then you're like, crap, you know. Uh, and so, like, you have to be convinced. You know, and Jesus was convinced about who he was, where he was going who he belonged to, his mission, what he could do. So the Father had that, put everything in his hands. He was convinced. And he was convinced that his disciples could do all things. That's why he would say things like, Surely I tell you that if you were to speak to this mountain, you would command it and tell it to be removed and be cast into the sea, it would obey you if you do not doubt. If you do not doubt. And he said, and anything will be possible, anything you say will be possible if you believe. Like, you know, when men, all things are, when men, things are impossible, with God, all things are possible. But he says, to those who believe, all things are possible. So, when you believe, you put yourself in the same page with God. Same page. Anything that God says about you, you know, and God says amazing stuff about us, and he thinks we can do all things, becomes possible when you start believing who you really are and what God says about you. And that... What your mind has con what you have been conditioning your mind to think about yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we have uh, to be aggressive with what we're gonna be thinking in our minds, what's gonna what we're gonna be allowing to be in our minds. You have to be completely aggressive when it comes to stuff like that. Because whatever you think, whatever is it, it, it is it's gonna be what you feel and it's gonna be your reality. It's gonna be your your experience. You know, your experience is going to be real to you. It's going to be things you're going to be experiencing. And most people don't don't think of themselves the way that God thinks about them. You know, so um, I want to, like, talk about, like, like the sequence of how, how you're 30 years old, I'm 30, you know, um, you could be, I don't know, 25, 50, uh, any age, you know, you don't just get to that age, to the to who you are as a person at that age, by it ain't just happen in one day. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a progression, or in this case, a regression because when you're a kid, that's when you when you got it going on. You know what I'm saying? And then the more you become less of a kid, the more you're you It's not a progression; it's a regression. You know, Jesus said, unless you become as a child, you can by no means can you see the kingdom of heaven. You know, and it's not even that he was saying, he says, see it. There's a part where he says, he talks about seeing it and entering in it. There's people that enter the kingdom as a child, but then they don't see it because they don't continue. You know, because to do a sinner's prayer, or to believe, you know, that you say a prayer or whatever, you ask Jesus, you say, Jesus, Lord, and all your sins are forgiven and everything's cool and you're a brand new creation. You gotta be like a kid to believe something like that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have faith, you know what I mean, to believe something like that. So people, like, like initially, they have faith for that and they, and they do it. 
But then they start working, they get into religion, they start doing the works and stuff like that. And now all of a sudden you got the most important thing, which is like relationship by faith and for free. But then you gotta work for all these other things. You wanna work for the anointing, you wanna work for God to use you, you wanna work for some church, you wanna you know, so you have so then you start as a kid, but then you go back into your old patterns of you know, performance and, and working. So you have to be completely aggressive, you know, and see where you've been programmed, you know, to believe what you believe. And like, unless you're a kid and you receive the kingdom as a kid and you receive the Father as a kid, it's very hard to be uh, uh, even intimate with God, you know what I'm saying, when, when you're independent. You know, because we were never created to be independent from God. Meaning that, like, God didn't want us, it wasn't that the guy was like, you know what? They're going to depend on me. And if they don't depend on me, they're going to be able to do jack. You know, and it wasn't that. It's that we were designed to be in God. The same way that the Trinity works together for the Son, Holy Spirit. And they're not independent from each other. And they just work together and in sync. You know, there's no uh, subordination in the, in, 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 you know. Like people, there's some teachings out there that say that the Spirit is sub, uh, sub, sub, uh, subordinate to, to Jesus, and Jesus is subordinate to the Father, and it's like a pyramid. There is no pyramid, it's a circle. You know, there's equality in the, in the, in the Godhead. And, and, and when God brings us into that mixture, when He brings us into that oneness, we have the same thing. We're, we're sitting in the throne, too. We have a saying, too. You know, I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, maybe I won't get so deep into that, because that's kind of stuff, you know, but we do. Like, I don't want people telling me, telling me emails, telling me that, like, I'm saying that we're, that, they, that we're God and that I'm a God or that I'm Jesus or that I'm the Father, you know. No, you're not. But but you become one, you know, and then God be, begins to make the distinction between you and Him. You know, and uh, what I was saying yesterday, Jesus understood, He understood oneness, you know, um, he will say things that escapes a lot of people. He escapes a lot of people. He had this, uh, uh, some of the things that he would say, just to give you an example of how he understood oneness. He would say things like, okay, oneness with him and the Father, check it out. He would say things like, okay, when you see me, you see the Father. Philip, haven't I been, you know, haven't I been here with you so long that you, haven't, you don't see me? You know, everything the Father has is mine. Me and the Father are one. When you have seen me, you see the Father. One day we him and the Father. Now, people talk about that and they, they know those scriptures, but they, they lose the ones that he talks about oneness with us, when he was one with us. Like, uh, with people in general. He said, uh, 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 on that day, you will say, you know, uh, no, he said, he said uh, I was naked and you did not, and you did not, uh, uh, you did not clothe me. I was in jail, you did not visit me. I was hungry, you did not feed me. And the disciples were like, and on that day they will ask me, Lord, Lord, when were you uh, naked or in jail or in the hospital or sick? And we did not do that. He said, well, when you didn't do it for them, you didn't do it for me. Because he understood that them and him were one. So he said, when you didn't do it for one of the little ones, you didn't do it for me. Whoever gives a cup of water to one of the little ones in my name, he does it unto me. Whoever does anything, you know, he understood that, he was, that he's one. Even at that time, and of course, even at that time, he understood that he was one with us, you know. And he would say things like that, but, but you know, because, I mean, even, like, people will say, like, okay, when Peter, when, when Paul is persecuting the church, and Saul, at that time, and he's, like, and, and he's persecuting, and, and the Lord appears to him, and that's why he said, Saul, Saul, why, why do you persecute me? Okay, so they say, okay, yeah, he's talking about the church. But even before that, he's saying, Whatever you do for this little one, so you do it for this person or that person, you do it unto me. You know? So he understood one is in, 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 in love of that, like, most people don't even, like, talk about, they don't think about. And it is important for you to see yourself as one with God and not separated from God. Because that's what kicks in the mind of Christ. Like, the mind of Christ is inside you. When you think oneness, that's when you start using it. As long as you think separate, you're just using your brain. Your natural brain, like your, your natural brain, will want to like, like uh, look at labels, label everything, measure everything. Like the human brain thinks in labels, 
measurements, black, white, limitations. That's how the human brain is, you know. So like, if, if I'm operating in my human brain, I, I need a label of some sort to be comfortable. I need to know why this thing is called, you know, to be comfortable. If I don't, if I don't, a definition, an explanation to be comfortable, if I'm just operating in my human brain. You know, I need to know if it's black or white, if it's good or bad, if it's moral or immoral, if it's right or wrong, if it's up or down, how much does it weigh, how, how large it is, how long is it going to be, when does it start, when does it finish, human brain. Matter Christ, unlimited. The matter Christ is different. The matter Christ is like, you know, labels, it's already like, you know, you can't even use one label because you could be right, but then you're right incomplete. You know, you can say I'm a son, but okay, I'm a son, but I'm a, I'm a priest, and I'm one with God, I'm a warrior, I'm a king, you know. So like, if I just say I'm a son, and just discard all the other label, all the other things that I am too, then I would just, you know. But I think son, and and that just saying you're a son of God, it it, it covers everything. It covers everything, everything, everything else. But most people don't know what a son is. Thank you.